Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Learn. In today's tutorial, we are going to learn how to install Kali Linux on VirtualBox and discuss various other ways through which you can install Kali Linux on your desktop operating system and various kinds of operating systems. And I should mention that, that Kali Linux is a powerful tool for cybersecurity professionals and enthusiasts. So today, I will guide you through the installation process step by step. So let's get straight into it. And so first, we will install Kali Linux in VirtualBox and I will tell you other ways also from that you can do that. But today, as it is convenient way to install in VirtualBox using Windows simultaneously. So we'll be using VirtualBox and in between while downloading the VirtualBox and the Kali Linux, while it would be downloading, I will tell you guys all the ways through which we can install Kali Linux. So if you want to jump start to the installation part, you can watch the timestamp to install it in the virtual box and jump to it. And if you want to see other ways also, just carry on with us. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. And before commencing, guys, just a quick info for you. If you are an aspiring cybersecurity professional looking for online training and certification from prestigious universities and in collaboration with leading experts to enhance your credibility, then search no more. Simply Learn's postgraduate program in cybersecurity from MIT University in collaboration with EC Council should be a right choice. For more details, use the link in the description box below. So now we'll move to setting up virtual box. So first thing we need to watch is considerations and first we'll move to VirtualBox website. So this is Oracle VM VirtualBox. We'll move to the download section and here we have Windows host option. So we'll click on that and get this application downloaded. So as it is downloading, we'll move to Kali Linux website. And we'll download the ISO file so that we can install it in the virtual box. So here you can see that this is 64 bit version. So we'll download the ISO file and it is around 4 GB. So it would be taking time to download. And with this process, we'll discuss the various ways with that you can install Kali Linux in your system. So till then it gets downloaded. So let's discuss the ways with which you can download the file and install in your system. So the number one way is direct installation that is bare metal. So this involves installing Kali Linux directly on the hardware as the primary operating system. So this method is straightforward but erases all existing data on the disk if not partitioned correctly. Then comes the dual booting. So dual booting allows you to install Kali Linux alongside another operating system such as Windows or Mac OS. This setup lets you choose which OS to boot into at startup. But it requires careful disk partitioning and bootloader configuration to ensure both systems work without interference. Then comes virtual machines. So running Kali Linux inside a virtual machine is a popular choice for those who use operating systems like Windows, Mac OS or another Linux distribution. So tools like VMware, VirtualBox and Parallel Desktop enable users to run Kali Linux in an isolated environment. We are using VirtualBox here. So this method is safe as it doesn't affect the host operating system and is ideal for testing and educational purposes. Then comes Live Boot. So Kali Linux can be booted from a USB stick or DVD without installation on the hard drive. So this live mode is useful for temporary tasks and leaves no traces on the host computer once the USB or DVD is removed. It's also a good way to test Kali without making any changes to your system. Then comes persistent USB. Similar to a live boot, a persistent USB installation allows you to save changes and retain additional software installations across reboots which the standard live USB does not support. Then comes Windows subsystem for Linux that is WSL for users on Windows 10 or Windows 11. 
Kali Linux can be installed as an application through the Windows subsystem for Linux that is WSL. So this allows you to run a Linux environment directly in Windows without the need for a dual boot setup or virtual machine. Then comes Docker containers. So Kali Linux can also run inside a Docker container on any system that supports Docker. This is a lightweight option that is particularly useful for those who need to run specific tools rather than the whole Kali Linux environment. Then comes cloud deployment. Kali Linux can be deployed on a cloud platform such as AWS, Azure or Google Cloud. This is beneficial for performing security testing with scalable resources. Now we'll see the download option and first install the virtual box. So here we have the virtual box. Click on that. And follow the process as I have already installed the virtual box on my system. So we don't need to get all the processes done here. So guys, you can see that now we are installing the virtual box as I will show you guys. Our Kali Linux setup has also been downloaded. Now moving back to virtual box. So first thing we need to watch is considerations for this. Number one would be hardware requirements that ensure your system meets the hardware requirements for the installation method you choose. And then comes the security that is considered the security implications especially for dual booting and direct installations. This I am talking about the ways to install Kali Linux and the purpose. Choose the installation method based on your purpose. Example, testing, learning, professional and use. And each method suits different needs and setups ranging from temporary use and learning scenarios to professional security testing environments. So first we have to make sure that VirtualBox is installed on our system. And if not, we can download it from the VirtualBox website as we have downloaded it. And to install VirtualBox, we need to have some enable hardware virtualization. I will show you guys. But before this, we will install it. We don't need to alter anything. So it's showing that installing it will reset your network connection and temporarily disconnect you from the network. Proceed with the installation now. We'll proceed with that. And if there are missing dependencies, we can install that also. And then comes the ready to install section. So this is the final step. You can click on that and, and get the things installed. But as I have already installed the virtual box on my system, so I won't be installing it again. So I will cancel this process and open the virtual box for you guys. And what I was telling you guys is you need to have enabled hardware virtualization. And what you can do that is just open the task manager by clicking control or delete. So here's the task manager moving here. You could see here that virtualization is enabled. So if it is not enabled, you can go to the BIOS section and enable it. And now we have the virtual box here and we have downloaded the Kali Linux ISO file. And now we'll see the direct installation. So first you need to click on new and name your VM. So we will name it as Kali Linux. And we don't need to select any ISO image type is Linux and the version we will select is 64 bit Debian. So Debian 11, 16, 64 bit. And once we'll check here also what we have downloaded. So that's 64 bit 2024.2 change log. So here we'll select Debian Elan full size 64 bit. Then click on next. And here you have to allocate around 1000 MB of RAM. I would be allocating around 2048 MB and the processor I would be dedicating would be around three. So three processor I have dedicated. And now we'll click on the next section. And here we have the disk size. So how much disk size you want to allocate this. So I would allocate around 35 GB. That is 38 GB. Then click on next. And here you can find the summary that you have set up a new system named Kali Linux. And that is running guest OS type that is Debian Elan bull size 64 bit. Then we have the base memory, processor and the disk size. Then we'll click on finish. Now, 
we'll click on the settings we'll configure some of the settings for the firmware and now in the general section only we'll click on advanced and here we have the shared clipboard and here we will turn it to bi-directional so what it does is we can now operate the mouse and the keyboard option both in windows and this virtual box so after this we will move to display section and make the video memory to max so what this does is this is the graphic controller and we will set here as VMS VGA and click on the enable 3D acceleration so this will allow virtual machine to use host machine GPUs now we will click on storage and click on empty and then select the DVD icon and here we will choose the file that is what we have downloaded Kali Linux and after that we will move to network we will go to settings again we will move to network and under network we will switch to attach to option to bridged adapter so this will allow access similar to your main system via SSH connection now I'll click OK and now we'll click on the start as you could see that it is powering VM up so you could see the installation saver here we'll click on install and now the system is asking for the language we will select English then the area that would be United States or you could choose accordingly what you have and then the key map to use we will use the American English only You could see the process is moving on. As we have already discussed the ways to install Linux on our systems. Number one was direct installation. Then we had the dual booting and then we had the virtual machines that we are currently doing. And after that we have the live boot. So what it's doing is configure the network. Your network is probably not using the DHCP protocol alternatively the DHCP server may be slow or some network hardware is not working properly okay we'll click continue and we won't configure this at this time now he's asking about the host name and we'll set it as Kali only and now he's asking for the full name so we'll click on that that would be the username of our account and now he's asking for the password so I will blur this out so he's asking about the clock select your time zone we'll select this only And for beginners, we'll select guided use entire disk and confirm all changes to the disk and choose all in one partition. And finish partitioning. Write the changes to disk. Yes. now we have the software to install and we'll select the genome 2 and replace xfsc and move to continue
and you can choose the software you want to install for new users the default section is typically fine or you can use genome and unselect the XFC. Now you can see that we have installed the grub bootloader on our virtual disk when prompted and now we have finished the installation and now we'll reboot it and now we'll reboot the system and make sure to remove the installation media which is the case means that is unmounting the ISO from the virtual box settings. <coughs> so you can see that our Kali Linux has been installed and while booting it has removed all the installation processes and you could find here the username and with password we'll move on so this is how we install Kali Linux on VirtualBox and I will show you guys some of the commands that you can run here. We'll open the terminal. And first thing we need to do is update the system. We have opened the terminal and write a command that would be sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade. And now it's asking for password. I will write the password here. Now you can see it has started working on the updation and upgradation of all the directories present in Kali Linux. So you could see that the summary is upgrading zero, installing zero and removing zero and not upgrading zero as we don't have any installed dependencies here as we have just installed the Kali Linux. And if you want, we can run other commands also. So to display the current directory, in which directory you are, just write pwd, so you are in home, abisar. And if you want to know all the files here, you could just write ls, so it will list all the files and directories in the current directory. So you could see that in abisar, we have desktop documents, downloads, music, pictures, public templates, and videos. And if you want to navigate into something or navigate to the home directory, what you can write is cd and this sign. Now you are in the home directory. To check it, you could just write pwd. Here you are in the home directory that is pwd abisar. Now if you want to create a new directory, so for that you can write the command mkdir that is make directory and name the folder as test underscore directory. And now you could write ls to list all the files and check if the folder is created or not. So you could see that test underscore dira is here and we have created the new folder. If you want to move into this folder, you just need to write the folder name that is test underscore dir. So now you are in the folder. To check that, you can write the command pwd and here you are home abisar test directory. And with that, guys. We have known how to install Kali Linux on VirtualBox. If you guys have any doubt or comments, comment down in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe with your friends. Till then, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.